Welcome to this lesson on volume. In this video lesson, I'm going to go over this volume graphic organizer. And I'll be going over volume notes continued, where we talk about where the formulas come from. Alright, so let's go back and review the different shapes that we have learned and their formulas. So for a rectangular prism or a cube, like the one you see in this picture, the formula is either base times height, and remember that B stands for area of the base, or you'll also see length times width times height for a rectangular prism. You may see length cubed for a cube, but all of those mean the same thing. And if you look over here at the notes, if you are given this formula, if you have a rectangular base, you're going to change the B to length times width. And then if you have a square base, you can change the B to length times length. Because in a square, there will be the same size. And then of course H is the height. So let's find the volume of this shape. So we have a rectangular base, so I'm going to change the B to length times width times height. So 8 times 7 times 6. And remember, the order really doesn't matter because the length, width, and height really depend on the way the shape is facing. And you get 336 feet cubed. Alright, the next one is a square pyramid or a rectangular pyramid. And again, you may see a formula with a capital B, which stands for area of the base. So if you have a rectangular base, you can change that B to length times width because that's a formula for area of a rectangle. And then for a square base, length times length, the H is still the height. So this one has a square base, 5 times 5, so length times length times height. So 5 times 5 times 6. All right, and I'm going to write it right up here, 50 centimeters cubed. Alright, the next one is a cylinder, and the formula is pi r squared h, where r is the radius and h is the height. So, on this example, my radius is 4 and my height is 10. And you can type these in with me as I'm going over them. If you need a second more to type it in, just pause the video. Alright, and I got 502.7 inches cubed. For a colon, the volume is one-third pi r squared h, where r is the radius and h is the height. And remember, height must be perpendicular to the base. So it must be straight up and down. You don't want to use the slant height. That's used for surface area. All right, so one-third pi, my radius is 2, and my height is 5. And I get, let's see, about 20.9 millimeters cubed. All right, and then the last one is a sphere. The only thing you will have for a sphere is the radius. It's the only variable, so 4 thirds pi. 6 cubed. And I get about 904.8 centimeters cubed. All right, let's continue on and talk about where these formulas come from. So remember, a 3D shape is made up of two dimensional shapes or 2D shapes that are stacked on top of each other. So if you think about, for example, a cylinder. A cylinder is really just circles that are stacked on top of each other. Just a lot of circles stacked on top of each other. So where do the volume formulas come from? Well, if we think about the volume of a cylinder formula, it's pi r squared h. And there's actually a formula inside that formula. So pause the video now and see if you can find that formula. 
Okay, so you should have found the area of a circle formula, which is pi r squared. How does that relate to the volume of a cylinder? Well, a cylinder is made up of circles. And then if you think about the height, the height really just tells you, well, how many circles are there? How tall are the circles? All right, so what other formulas have smaller formulas inside of them? So pause the video and see if you can find one. All right, so another one is a cone. One third pi r squared h, and again, it has that pi r squared because a cone is just circles stacked on top of each other, but they're gradually getting smaller. That's where the one third comes from. So the conclusion is that volume formulas come from the area of their base. So for example, a cone and a cylinder, the base is a circle multiplied by their height. So how many circles are there? And the same can be said for a rectangular prism. For a prism, it's base times height, and the base is length times width. That's a rectangle. And then the height is how many rectangles are there. All right, the other part of this lesson is going to involve the volume of composite solids. And a composite solid is a solid made up of two or more three-dimensional shapes. So it's going to have more than one shape stuck together. To find the volume, we're going to break the shape down into three-dimensional shapes that we know. Then we're either going to add or subtract the volume depending on what the picture looks like. So for example, in number one, I see two three-dimensional shapes. I see a cylinder and I see a rectangular prism. So if I want to find the volume of that whole shape, I can find the volume of each shape individually and then I'm going to add them together. So for the cylinder, it's pi r squared h. So pi 4 squared times 7. And I get about 351.9. And you may not want to round as much on the individual shapes, just round at the very end. So you can just leave it in your calculator, 351.858. It's going to give you a more accurate answer. And then for the rectangular prism, it's length times width times height. So 8 times 9 times 10, which gives me 720. So I'm going to add those together, and I'm just taking the number that was in my calculator for the cylinder just to give me a little bit more accurate answer and I get 1071.85 I'm just gonna round that to 9 centimeters cubed all right and then for number two we have a cylinder and then we have a cone that looks like it's been cut out of it so in this one I'm not going to add I'm gonna be subtracting to find the final so I have a cylinder and I have a cone. All right, so the cylinder is pi r squared h. So pi, here's my radius, 10, and here's the height, 22, which gives me 6,911.5. And then the cone is one third pi r squared h, so my radius is still 10, but the height of the cone is 18. And that gives me about 1,884.95 or 96. And remember, the less you round on these individual ones, the more accurate your final answer is going to be. All right, and remember you also want to subtract on this. So we're not adding, we're subtracting. And you get about 5,026.5 centimeters cubed. Okay, you can go ahead and stop the video now and complete the practice and check it with your teacher.